Michigan, Gary Peters. Thank you, Senator. Uh, congratulations uh, to both of our uh, nominees here uh, on your uh, nomination to these important positions. Mr. Isaacman, we uh, had a great opportunity to talk yesterday uh, in my office about a variety of issues. Artemis came up uh, frequently, as I know it's come up at the hearing uh, frequently as well, including uh, Senator Moran in the previous question. And you suggested uh, here and there that uh, NASA can pursue the Artemis program uh, or a mission to the moon and a potential Mars mission in parallel tracks is, is how you've been describing it. Uh, I'm concerned, uh, though, about the possibility of achieving that while we expect uh, budget cuts uh, to NASA. We've already seen uh, its cuts and somewhat significant cuts, I would uh, argue, uh, to staff uh, at NASA. So my question for you is, do, do you agree that budget cuts would undermine uh, that vision that you are expressing? Well, Senator, I, I think right now NASA has a pretty extraordinary budget. I, I believe it's close to every federal law enforcement agency combined times two. Uh, with that budget and those resources available, I do believe we can do the near impossible. I think we can have multiple flagship scientific missions at once, which means we can have multiple space exploration missions at once and try and solve the space economy in low Earth orbit, sir. Even with budget cuts, you'll be able to do that? Uh, well, Senator, I'm not familiar with what the, the, what's potentially being contemplated, um, but I will absolutely do the most with the resources available to try and deliver on NASA's world-changing mission, sir. So uh, given the, I think it's pretty clear we're likely to see constrained uh, budgets, uh, how do you envision speeding up our timeline for uh, the Mars mission that you talked about while also ensuring that Artemis is uh, properly resourced uh, and protected from any future cuts uh, that may come their way? Well, Senator, I think across the board, uh, we have to acknowledge, as I mentioned in our opening remarks, we do have, we do have problems here. Uh, the president, presidents have called for a uh, return to the moon and a path to Mars since 1989. We spent a lot of money and we haven't gotten this crew around the moon, let alone landing on it. Uh, if I'm confirmed, I absolutely am going to roll up my sleeves and get in the trenches with the best and brightest and figure out where we have our program challenges, what's impeding progress, clear those obstacles, and get back to delivering on the mission. If we can do that, then we're going to get the inspirational uh, side of NASA going, we're going to get the STEM side growing, and the next generation is going to grow up and want to reach even farther, sir. Uh, as you know, public-private uh, partnerships between NASA and commercial space companies is a, is a critical part of uh, space exploration efforts. You know that. Uh, firsthand uh, from uh, your flight uh, to space uh, twice with SpaceX. Um, and I understand that you have uh, uh, business ties uh, with SpaceX uh, previous uh, to your nomination as well. Uh, my, my question uh, for you, uh, given the fact that Elon Musk serves both as the CEO of SpaceX as well as a, is a White House employee and leader over Doge, uh, which has uh, significant influence uh, over spending and contracts, uh, at least that's what we have been seeing. Um, certainly in our meeting, I was happy to hear you say to me that you are, are not beholden uh, to Elon Musk uh, in any way. So I want to give you an opportunity to say that on the record, uh, if, I, if I may. So first, uh, have you had any communication, emails, text, or calls with Elon Musk regarding how your plan to manage NASA uh, since you were nominated? Not at all, Senator. What steps will you take, uh, if confirmed, to ensure that he is not allowed uh, undue influence given the extensive contracts that he has uh, with NASA, uh, uh, to make sure that he has uh, un no undue influence over the awarding or the implementation of those contracts? Well, I think, I think Senator, I, I absolutely want to be clear. My loyalty is to this nation, the space agency, and, and their world-changing mission. I, I have to imagine that in uh, the 1960s, Administrator Webb would have taken phone calls and welcomed the input from all the various contractors that were contributing to the endeavor. But they're the contractors. NASA is the customer. They work for us, not the other way around, Senator. Very good. Uh, Ms. Trustee, uh, you have a, a deep history uh, working on defense-related spectrum issues that are absolutely uh, critical, as you know, to our security apparatus. However, agencies other than the DOD use Spectrum key, uh, for key public safety applications, and I believe that they need to be protected as well. One such band is 5.9, also known as the Auto Safety uh, Spectrum, which is overseen by the Department of Transportation. This band allows for the deployment of safety technologies, including cellular vehicle to everything technology that uh, certainly enables uh, collision avoidance, uh, freight efficiency movements, uh, and, and a whole lot more. In 2020, some of the spectrum was allocated away from these auto safety uh, purposes. 
which in my mind will reduce uh, roadway safety in the long term. And, and I believe we can't let that happen, happen again. Uh, I think my senator from Ohio will agree that uh, we have to make sure auto safety is always uh, put uh, uh, at the forefront of considerations when it comes to the spectrum. So my question to you is if confirmed, will you commit to protecting the remaining auto safety spectrum for roadway safety innovation like the cellular vehicle to everything technology? Senator, thank you for this question. And it's really important to me. In my time um, in the House, I worked closely with NHTSA on vehicle safety issues. So I'm very familiar with the, uh, the well, life-saving uh, potential of CVDX, V2V. Um, and so I think, as a, if confirmed, my responsibility is to put Spectrum to its highest and best use, meaning maximizing its economic and societal benefits. When it comes to vehicle safety, that will certainly be a part of the information in the record, and I'd be happy to work with you to ensure that CVDX can be deployed um, with the resources it needs so it's readily available to all Americans. Well, I hope it is a, a priority, and we'll, uh, if confirmed, uh, we will work closely with you. Thank you, Senator. Senator Blackburn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you to each of you.